I wanted to do a playthrough with a real doctor of Project Hospital because I haven't been able to find this anywhere else and I thought it would be quite interesting to see their opinion on how realistic uh, this game is and, uh, and what it's really like. I've been finding that I've been messaging lots of my friends who are doctors and asking them, hey, can you help me with this diagnosis? And they've been able to like recommend things that then end up meaning in-game I've been able to successfully diagnose someone and save a little virtual life. One of the people that's uh, that has been helping me is Jemima Jackson. Jemima is actually training now to uh, just at the end of her training to become a psychiatrist which is a bit like uh, the Charizard version of, uh, of a doctor. So let's meet Jemima and, uh, and, and get stuck into Project Hospital. Thanks. Welcome to the channel. Um, so what is, uh, so really quickly, first of all, what is your, so what like departments have you worked in? Okay, so, um, so for the last three years I've been um, working in mental health, although different parts of mental health, um, but before that I did my um, foundation years of um, uh, being a doctor in um, gastroenterology, um, vascular surgery, uh, psychiatry, general practice, um, the acute medical unit, and um, geriatric medicine. Wow. Okay, that's cool. That's like that's awesome. That's loads. <laughs> so, um, okay, so let us dive right in. Okay, let me get this bit. How do we do this? Resume. This is my first uh, time of doing screen sharing, and that's on the. Uh, probably should have used Twitch or something. So can you see what I'm seeing now? Yes, can. That's cool. So, um, okay, so this is my sort of quite rubbishy little hospital uh, that has just had to evolve out of the ground. You can see the floors are quite dirty over here. Um, <clears throat> so firstly, um, this, so this is very American as you'll probably be able to tell. And, um, and a lot of it is mainly run to try and make money and obviously that makes a certain amount of the game. Uh, I have patients come in here and they get diagnosed in this little bit here which is kind of like the, they call it an emergency department. Is is that an American thing? If you have like a, um, if you've got people coming in, well, I, how, what's the flow in a hospital? If Does someone, so here you can see people be coming in and going, sitting, uh, going with a triage nurse here and then sitting down going to a, a, a doctor and a doctor all and there will be anything from like they're about to have a cardiac arrest all the way through to athletes foots um does that ever happen in a hospital um well obviously not the athlete's foot but um <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i mean the flow most hospitals would have like a a kind of divided into two into kind of major major kind of um issues and minor injuries and things like that um so you just keep them separate um but the same thing so you'd have like a um a triage system at the front and then obviously you would get seen by either a, like a nurse practitioner or a doctor um hopefully get sorted out and then sent home or admitted into the hospital okay Okay, yeah, though that's that's similar to how this works. Like sometimes people have to be, they have to have hospitalisation, and then they, if uh, then they go to one of these beds, and then if uh, they can get referred to general surgery, which means they go, these, this is my wards. And you know, there's some people getting out of their beds on their phones, looking ill. This lady has cholangitis, which is um, sounds a simple one to solve. Or you just give antibiotics and. Uh, She's got jaundice. So, what's her prognosis? Is she likely to survive if this was a real life one? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I mean, it's, it's uh, inflammation. Um, yeah, usually antibiotics um, will, will cover it, and then they, yeah, they get better. Might come again. Might, might get it again though. But it's not normally. Like, yeah. How quickly do you, so there's lots of these people where I've, I feel like I'm just saving lives, especially with stuff like sepsis, um, with just giving them IV antibiotics and then a few hours later they're okay. Is that like a, is that like a thing that happens in real life? So it's, that's probably a little bit on the optimistic speed wise. Um, so, I mean, someone who's septic 
um, or something like cholangitis, yes, I give them antibiotics, but it probably would take two or three days for them to kind of get better from that. And it depends how bad it was in the first place and what, what it kind of caused their system to, to do, you know, to shut uh, down. Um, so it might take longer to get back. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, that makes sense. And also you've got to look at what the cause was in the first place. Obviously. Well, see, that's one of the issues with it, and that's because you can't make an infinite game, and that's fair enough. Um, that's, uh, yeah, that, that you don't know where their background, obviously, when they enter through these doors, they are created, and when they leave, they disappear, as far as I know. And yeah. um, and so, yeah, you, you know, you get some weird things happen, and uh, you don't know their background. Like, look at this man, 25-year-old accountant has hepatitis B. Like, what's his story? Yeah. Um, okay, what else? What have we got? What have we got floating around? Hyperthyroidism, we've got quite a few of those. Another thing that's, uh, this is the operating theatre, by the way. Hopefully, they're going to be taking this guy at some point who's got appendicitis to, um, to hospital here, to, to theatre. Um, yeah. Nice. Okay, so this is good. So um, the doctors should all come out of there. So the way this works is doctors play. Um, solitaire or watch YouTube all the time until there's a surgery when they all get up and then they go over to the surgery theatre, they get washed up and then do some theatre and then go back to playing solitaire and watching YouTube. How realistic is that? <laughs> um, well, um, there is probably some time when people are actually scheduled to go to the theatres and there's a lot of hanging around waiting for the theatre to, to be ready. So, um, to some extent, that's could be truthful. On the other hand, it doesn't look as though this game covers like clinics, outpatient clinics, and the kind of things that, that surgeons are doing the rest of the time. Ah, well, so this is my surge, my general surgery diagnostic room, and this is. Uh, yeah, no, I've got. I'll come back to that in a minute. And people generally can come here to get diagnosed by him. Maybe I've just got too many doctors because this is the pleasure of having a private healthcare system. It's, uh, uh, yeah, I can do all these bits. Oh no, he wasn't. He was just going. That guy was just getting his. Where's he gone? Where's Where's my appendicitis guy gone? No, oh, I've been hoping to get treated for days. Um, I see you get here. The nurses are all in here. They're just. I bet you they'll just be playing. Minecraft, a minesweeper or something as well. Where are you? you can see those good. That woman's just staring at a screen that's off. That can't be. That's not. That's that's. With the, so is she. That's <laughs> okay. Just that. That's insane. Um, this isn't a real hospital. There aren't enough patients. No. Well, at the minute, I've had 32 patients today. My hospital's not very big, though. To be fair, if we just zoom out, and I've got that's. This is the general uh, general surgery area this is the um uh, emergency rooms and stuff like that um yeah well, basically this is kind of where people come to begin with to get diagnosed and this is uh, these are my labs as well so over here is uh, the histo and, and hemo labs and this is a weird thing um i guess this is part of the game rather than part of an american system but when they get referred to the labs they have to go over to the to the labs and give bloods and then they wait while while they have their their work done. Um, so this is an interesting an interesting one. This guy here, 23 year old teacher, uh, all sorts of things he could potentially have. His symptoms are loss of appetite, abdominal pain, and vomiting. Um, what do you what would you do in this situation to find out what is wrong with this guy? Um, to be honest, I would probably just take more history, but I guess. I think I'm losing you. Yeah. So, um, can you hear me? Yep, yeah, go for it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so um, I think um, the main thing that in real life is obviously that you can tell most things from the history. So, when I say history, I mean. Um, the, the description of their current symptoms and how they started, and then also their background, um, like other health conditions or things like that. 
Um, obviously, with this game, it gives you a certain amount of information and it doesn't really give you much background or history of how the problem started. Nice. Um, so, and, um, so, with this chap, um, I mean, one thing that I would really think about is his age. So, um, for example, a 20 year old is really unlike. I think was there a cancer on I think it might be on under the uh, picture, but there was a cancer on your list of options, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, go back to so those so those would be really unlikely in someone his age. Um, okay. So if you go back to the first page. Well he's got his blood results through. Uh, okay. he's got anemia. Okay. Um so we've got your, your options. So again, chronic kidney disease will be like in a 23 um, as would be colorectal cancer. Gastritis is more likely an H. pylori infection would be more likely as well. So I'd go for one of those two. Uh, pylori, H. pylori, that one, or and what was the other one you said? Gastritis. Okay. What is that? That's. Oh. Is that is that as in um, where your your stomach wall gets a bit thin? Um, no, it it's uh, it's more just that it gets inflamed um, and it can then cause. So with an anemia, that one might be more likely because you're more likely to get eruptions um, of the stomach or the tract, and therefore you need a bit of blood and get anemia. Okay. Then, with, with anemia and his symptoms, then you might be uh, Okay. Okay, so you, so you haven't selected it yet, have you? I haven't chosen, no. He's now going to go back to his doctor, and his doctor is now going to. Oh, this guy's great. This is. Uh... Oh, dear. <laughs> This is my favourite doctor. He's um, he's an absolute genius with advanced diagnostics and, and generally diagnosing people with acute medicine. He's a specialist and he's been doing it a long time, but he's a total asshole. So uh, so whenever so he's usually the one that gets the, the, the diagnosis right, but he has this um, unpleasant, which means everyone who has an interaction with him leaves feeling sadder. So he's basically house. It's awesome. <laughs> Interesting, this guy has, oh yeah, he's just done something else, and he he, he thinks it looks like H. Glory. Uh, though the fact that this is flashing means that there is a, a symptom here that could cause a collapse. Do they call it collapse in real life? Um, it's not, um, I don't know, I mean, it depends, I guess you don't, if you knew that there collapse you might give it a name but you generally don't know do you but, no um, so, like, so just so collapse saying, like, like uh, you're gonna have a bad something yeah as in like they've had a collapse which means that they might they're just their, their things are deteriorating a lot and there's bleepers going off <laughs> yeah basically i think i think the word the way they're using it i think covers anything that basically in that patient is gonna crash you know pressure's going to crash or they're going to get very sick or you know something there could be hundreds of calls for a collapse so it's a general term okay that makes so, sense but so is that so that is that something we have to guess or is that well with it with his oh no well that one i don't know we could do more uh, we could do more investigations but sometimes yeah you could do more investigations he might collapse before then though that's not flashing very quickly it is a little bit actually Probably fine. <laughs> well, what would that be? What what could that be potentially that would it's something that's going to cause him big problems? Um, I mean, I suppose if he had um, gastritis or H. pylori. Um, I mean, obviously, just having like um, diarrhea and vomiting, that kind of thing, um, could cause you to just lose blood blood pressure, basically. So dehydration blood pressure kind of thing and then obviously you know, passing out if you're losing blood he's anemic we don't know how anemic he is but if he's oh do you know no it doesn't it doesn't say no it doesn't um, so 
But I mean, if he was losing blood from a gastritis um, or anything like that, then obviously he could also collapse because of blood loss. Um, oh, that so that could be something. Yeah. So what? So what? How could we uncover what this is? What would be? Why is he feeling so? What's wrong with so, um, have we have we had? Uh, we've had blood tests because that would be anemia. Is that right? Have those? He has, uh, no, what did he had? Oh, he's currently having his stool analysis done, which is fun. Okay. He has had a blood test, and that was where they found out about the anemia, yeah? That's all it showed, though. He could have, he could still have a serologic um, test. What's that? Is that, oh, is that serum? Yeah, I mean, so that's, that's blood tests, basically. So I don't, um, I'm not sure which one they're specifying separately there. Um, he um, can also have a colonoscopy biopsy, which sounds nasty, and that is classed as highly uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's he's not gonna. That's for cancer, isn't it? He's not probably gonna have. Yeah. It doesn't look like yeah. he's got a cancer. That's unlikely. Um, and. He could have a. Yeah, US. Um, I mean, you, you, you could potentially use an ultrasound if someone had um, like a, a blocked bowel um, and that was making them vomit and and stuff. So that's, I guess, a possibility. Um, but um, is gastroscopy, that's not available? Is that Gastroscopy, no, why is that? Can't be prescribed at this department. Uh, he's leaving, don't leave. Why are you leaving? No, 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 let me hospitalise you. Uh, I'll put you in for observations. Don't leave. Come on, man. <laughs> My turn. Uh, yeah, he's okay. Come on. Uh, okay. I think I acted too slow. I think because the clinic hours are finished, and his next thing, he'll come in tomorrow if he doesn't die overnight. If he dies overnight, someone will probably be really annoyed at me, with his family or something. What I'll do is I'll just, uh, <laughs> why are my, my janitors cleaning the street? Why are they doing that? Filling free time. His name is Michael Jackson. He looks like Louis C.K. and he's cleaning the street. <laughs> anyway, let's skip our night time. Um, oh, someone's in theatre. What's going on with it? Let's just uh, do some, let's fast forward some of these. There they go. I hope it's my, uh, my guy. No, someone. Esophageal varices. Am I so they're like? Are they like? Uh, oh, this is interesting. Watch, look, look. So, does, I guess this never happens, right? <laughs> Where the the patient bleeds on the floor, and immediately the janitors are in there cleaning it up without any masks, or they they, they just came straight off from cleaning the street into cleaning theatre. Yeah, no, it would. I mean. It would just be cleaned up straight away by the nurses, the scrub nurses and people in the operating theatre, so. Oi. Yeah, that doesn't sound a very nice job, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the janitors just do the, do what they want here, basically. They've got their... <laughs> <clears throat> um, one of the other questions I wanted to ask was, well, you've got something like, um, yeah, okay, brilliant example, duodenderitis, which, um, it's, that's a difficult one. It seems to be a difficult one to um, to diagnose. I guess is that because that part of the the body is right in the middle, and there's not a lot of things you can stick down or up to get to it. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly right. That you know, you just you, you you can get into the first part of the duodenum um, from the top, um, and obviously you can't get anywhere near it from the back, the bottom end. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that's that's kind of that's the main reason it's um, more difficult to diagnose. But um, again, you know, probably a lot of that you could you could work out from the history, really. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because that is um, she actually went into uh, seps that septic shock. Is that the same as sepsis? Um, no. So um, so there's kind of different. Um, there's a few different words similar but that means slightly different things so septic shock particularly is you're kind of losing blood pressure um and kind of 
the, the body going into shock from the sepsis. So you've got an infection, it becomes overwhelming and then the body mounts its response and the response itself then causes the body to sort of shut down. Um, so that's, that's the shock aspect. Um, and then obviously septicemia is different as well um, because septicemia is sepsis in the blood. E. Um, and that's and so you can you can have sepsis somewhere else or have a have a septic kind of um, you know like uh, perhaps a peritonitis or something um, but then it's when it gets into the bloodstream and then becomes a kind of full body infection essentially that that then becomes sepsis. a highly life-threatening condition okay yeah uh, yes okay that's and that's the one you don't want isn't it okay well, <clears throat> so she's had this, uh, and she's had lots of complications, and um, and and it says the solution for it is proton pump inhibitors. But am I right in thinking that's just a that's just a few pills, and that's not a very big deal? PPIs. Um, yeah, I mean, it really would depend on the cause of the of the duodenitis. Um, uh. and so the PPIs would probably be the main thing to use to start off with, with someone who had initial symptoms where they were getting overproduction of acid in the stomach or um, you know, it was causing kind of erosions of the, of the, of the stomach lining or lining of the duodenum. And so the proton pump inhibitors stop that production. So it can be as simple as that, but um, depends depends how long she's had the whether it's got worse might need more stuff so that's like uh okay oh, great i just uh on a side note i just got a um just did something right and the reward was increased clinic patients per day to 20 it's like thanks <laughs> um because generally when people come in and the cure is ppis um the amount of money you get is really high but i don't know if I mean, she's having to have uh, endoscopic cauterization, which is a surgery, isn't it? Yeah, but is, is this the same patient with the esophageal? No, uh -huh. no is this one is, uh, she is... Sorry, go on, say that again. Is it, is this, she's just got duodenitis. Yeah, she does, yeah. So she's having cauterization? She's have well. She she's in for the yeah. So she's in she's in hospital because she had septic se a septic shock. She's had intestinal bleeding as well, which I guess that makes sense. Oh, doesn't it? So that was the cauterization. Ah, that's to solve that, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Ah. So, she, that, so she had the duodenitis, um, and that caused uh, like an erosion in the duodenum. Um, obviously then went through enough to hit a blood vessel causing the bleeding you'd try that and then you would um help obviously protect the area by giving the PPIs. oh wow okay so that's that's kind of it from a game point of view that feels encouraging that that you can kind of figure you can say all what's going on there without necessarily yeah. being able to see all the things that the game is doing um that's really good. Okay. Um, is there anything else that we should have a look at while we're here before we conclude? Let's skip to the daytime because uh, we'll just see all... Ah, so hang on. This guy has been in bed for a long. What's his problem? The kidney stones. And he's weeing blood as well. That's not good. What, what's his deal? What's wrong with this? Uh, meds required for examination interview is occupied or your staff have been busy for ages eh, it doesn't matter i'll deal with that later and so he's still got a kidney symptom as well but we don't necessarily need to know what that is no it's um yeah it's nothing serious but I, I, you could probably work it out actually i mean as in you could i guess because um he we know that he's got calculus of the ureter <laughs> Uh, and he's got all these symptoms. Is there another one that he might well have? 
that would go along with this? Um, he hasn't had an ultrasound, which that would that would be something you'd have with kidney stones, isn't it? Um, yes. Um, and he hasn't had your analysis. Okay. We know he's got blood anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose you'd, you'd want you see if he had an infection in the urine analysis, but it's probably not going to change the plan at this point. If you know that he's got a calculus, then you'd probably go for the... Uh, so he's already, ha he's already having the, the rehydration and stuff, you see? He is, yes, that is, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Did you read that or you were just like, he needs to have that? <laughs> well, you, you want to stabilise the patient first if they've come in acutely unwell um, and then uh, lithotripsy. Okay, okay. Oh, this is our guy. Uh, okay, well, we'll... Um... He's having the triple treatment, which is a, a one that takes a long time and uses up my beds. <clears throat> Let's skip to the daytime and uh, and we'll see. Uh, so it has to be so the triple treatment you have to do in hospital. Say that again, sorry, you're breaking up. The triple treatment you have to give in hospital. Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, is that is that the same in real life or? Not really. I mean, obviously, if they were unwell, you'd keep them in while they're unwell, but otherwise, it's just three different drugs you're giving at the same time, that's all. Oh, okay. Um, so you give them well, that's a dialysis. That one's a kidney stones. That one's, yeah, triple treatment. treatment. Uh, now, why did he need to be in hospital? It doesn't look like he needs to be in hospital. Um, <clears throat> Required ICU, regular ward, high dependency. Or diagnostic unit at general surgery department. It sounds like it's presuming that he's unwell, very unwell with it. But maybe. Well, I mean, there's nothing here that seems scary. Excessive belching. I don't know if that. He's only paying two hundred and eighty dollars, which uh, I, I don't think in the American healthcare system that wouldn't get you very far, would it? <laughs> I don't think that would pay for the car park in an American system. Let's, before we go, let's just check and see if we get anyone interesting come in. We might have uh, might have an ambulance one soon. Here are all my staff rushing in. Which is quite so, the, so all of your patients in the hospital could come in through a kind of A and E system, right? Yeah, they all come in through basically through. They call it emergency, and that's like the basic first one you get. And I don't know if that, and they are, they're not emergency. Most of the, they're just, only, well, some of them are, but generally they're not emergency things. They're just people who come in and want to get something checked out. So it feels like that's what they mean there is GP uh, stuff. So here you go, the guy here probably with, well, he's got tonsillitis of some kinds. Got this problem of, and this is one of the questions I think I asked before, uh, which was, you don't know if you've got bacterial or viral tonsillitis. Um, is it not worth, is it worth just being like, well, I'm not going to bother doing any of these timely um, inspections, just give him uh, antibiotics and send him home and tell him to rest. And that would cover both bases. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think um, as we just thought, um, it would completely depend on what the game's interpretation of good practice is, really. Um, because, um, I mean, as a, as a GP in the UK, you would obviously do the neck palpation, the auscultation, the oral cavity inspection, the ear examination, um, as soon as the patient arrives. Um, and that would hopefully give you enough information to make a decision. Um, so you don't have to We've got between bacterial or viral. It's more that it's going to be viral, um, and obviously in, we try not to overprescribe antibiotics when they're not going to be useful. But in terms of, um, does it do any harm to give someone some antibiotics in in itself? Not much. 
apart from maybe them having an upset stomach while they take them. So you could just give them cover all your bases. So in the in the seventies, or, or when before we kind of worried about um, things like that, uh, worried about uh, back, uh, antibiotic resistance, would they have just given them out willy nilly for everything? You know, for if in doubt. Um, yeah, I think I think basically, I don't know about I don't, I'm not sure when the sort of peak of antibiotic use was, but um, but. Yeah, I think they, they would have been given out much more freely. Having said that, I think um, perhaps people didn't expect to get antibiotics for as many different conditions. Um, yeah, a, lot, a lot of infections, your body will fight off themselves it's itself if you leave it and just get through it. Um, whereas I think there was also a bit of a peak of patients feeling that they can go and ask for antibiotics um, in the sort of ah. 80s and so that kind of um, the two sort of came together and obviously then there was more understanding about antibiotics um, uh, antibiotic resistant drug uh, uh, bacteria and things so um, yeah and now we're in quite a bad position with that aren't we as in like that's Getting quite dire is that right um yeah it's i think some of the um there are certainly obviously um bugs that are now quite resistant to most of our standard antibiotics and we had very very few new antibiotics um made or brought out in the last 10 years mm. um so it's it's kind of fine while it's fine but there there could if we had a kind of bacterial surge of um resistance you know like the kind of mrsa kind of situations um yeah. then we could be in a similar situation to what we're in now with the virus so. yeah that's interesting oh wow yeah like a bacterial lockdown um uh, yeah, so interestingly, our chap yesterday that we were trying to work out if it was gastritis or H. pylori uh, has come back, waited for his results, and has actually collapsed in the waiting room of the histology lab. So, um, so that's bad. So whatever that hidden symptom was has caused septic septic shock. Okay. So he needs to get to. We'll get him to trauma center hospitalization. Here we go. I've got a. What's that? Who's that? That's, oh, that's my. Uh, <laughs> that's my biochemist has come out and is like, I'll help you. And so someone will come all the way over from the other side of the hospital, hopefully with a stretcher. At some point, they should go quickly. I would hope. Maybe not. So, okay. So he was septic, which doesn't really tell us whether it's H. pylori or gastritis, but. Are they both? Um, well, it, it, if it's a septus, doesn't that mean that it's uh, there's been a bacterial, so there's something bacterially has happened somewhere along the line? Here they come. Oh, what's the third thing? I can't, I can't see that. The what's diagnosis. Uh, uh, colorectal and <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, that's the cancer. That's fine. Um, it's definitely not that one, is it? No, it worked very unlikely anyway. Um, so the most likely thing is he has an infection, which could be gastritis, could I mean H or could be H pylori, but um, obviously that's become a septic situation. So now where is he? He's going to be taken to trauma. Yeah, they're taking him to the trauma center. Which, oh, yeah, yeah. there he goes. <laughs> Graphically, this game isn't perfect, but they've obviously emphasised realism uh, or uh, realism in the text rather than she's just leaving. Hi. <laughs> there we go. Now, here's a, the on-call doctor and an on-call nurse. And they're going to be like, you'd think they would have got there before he arrived. Oh, well. So they're now going to stabilise him. I so say they need to give him um, they need to give him antibiotics, don't they? Intravenously. Yeah, there you go. So that's now suppressed now, which is good. 
Should we just treat him? Should we just give him the triple treatment, the triple therapy? And hope for the best. What uh, oh, I see is we can't actually look at the options until we have selected the diagnosis. That's yeah. So we could, uh, I mean, we can select it and then uh, and then unselect it again. I can now take him over to ICU and give him. What does he need? Triple therapy. He needs to actually be in. Yeah, he can't be prescribed that in trauma. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. So, do they have to stabilise him first anyway? Yeah, which is yeah. To, uh, yeah, so they'll be stabilized. They're stabilizing him now using IV antibiotics, and uh, and that is suppressing the septic shock. Okay, that's fine. The problem is still there, uh, and I don't know if I gave him the the, the triple triple therapy treatment. Um, whatever that is, would that get better if the H. pylori has gone? Um. So, I guess, I mean, I don't know, I'm not quite sure which, what symptoms there are, but um, I mean, obviously the septic shock implies that there was an infection of some sort, um, and that isn't already on your symptoms. Hmm. We didn't have, so the bloods only showed up anemia. Yes, we did. Uh, Blood drawn and blood test. Oh yeah, first yeah, and uh, the the serologic one is also available. Yeah. <clears throat> we could just send him to another hospital. That's another option. <laughs> Don't do that. We can find out what it is. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um. Hmm. What can that symptom be? So, I mean, infection isn't a symptom, is it? Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I've, let's have a click around and see if someone else has got something. Uh, actually, this guy doesn't look too healthy. He's got something wrong with him as well. Uh, he's got a good old weight loss, diarrhea. Let's see what have you got? Yeah, so I don't think they'd put infection as a no. symptom. Um, it's uh, I mean, it's what was that? Sorry, I'm just uh, sorting this woman out. Okay, okay. We're back to him. <clears throat> so it's, I mean, um, since he had the collapse, I would have said it was more likely that he's uh, bleeding somewhere, but um, but then it, they've they've called it septic shock, so it's not so mm -hmm. like. Um, so, yeah, I guess we still. I, I mean, I suppose H. pylori is the more likely of the two, if it's if it's got become a um, a collapse. Um, although gastritis could get that severe, but I'd go for H. pylori. Okay. All right. Um, right, let's do that. Hang on, let me just sort this guy in because he's going to leave. What's wrong with him? Yeah, you've got hepatitis. What's your... There we go. Sorry. And then we'll go back to our other friend here. And they're now going to take him. So we've said it's H. pylori. Uh, we're going to take him over to ICU and give him the triple treatment. And uh, and I guess in a way, that is a way of, di of just knowing what the problem is. And um, a lot quicker that time. They've just given him. Yeah. Go, so he, he... To be fair, when somebody has actually crashed, then you um, you do have to basically make assumptions and treat with whatever you've got available. Um, obviously, the actual collapse is not so common. So, in real life, you'd probably have more time to do more tests if you weren't sure. Because the collapse isn't so common, is that because uh, they, you know, if things are serious, they'll catch it beforehand? Yeah, I mean, people don't tend to deteriorate that quickly, um, or they tend to present to the DP or the hospital with enough time before they collapse. 
That's um, interesting. I wonder if that's the same in America where you have to pay four hundred dollars to go to the GP. And you're like, well, you know, maybe not. Yeah, maybe people do wait for longer. It's a last resort to to go. Obviously, that you know, it would change your mindset, wouldn't it? Apparently, Britain has one of the best preventative medicine systems in the world, I heard. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> uh, preventative? Apparently so. Not in mental health, obviously. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't say that. I, I would say that we have a really reactive system, oh. um, generally speaking, um, because... Um, you know, we're, we're, the way it's set up, the way it's funded, is it's all about dealing with problems that have arisen rather than stopping them in the first place. I don't think our prevention of major conditions is particularly fantastic compared to some other countries. And certainly our screening of um, kind of cancers and things like that is, is worse than other countries oh that's i think the person who told me that the reason they were saying that was because because you can so easily go to things like the gp you don't have to worry about spending money uh and yeah. so it means that and they were saying that that because of that we have a good preemptive but we have a very bad uh treatment which is why we we will suffer more in the corona situation but i mean this person i was speaking to wasn't a medic but, uh, yeah. So. Um, yeah, I think. I mean, um, I think you're right. I think people can go to the GP freely, um, and that is helpful. I think the fact that we offer a system that covers everyone does mean we're spread more thinly, um, and therefore we are good at the kind of emergency care side of things. Um, and you know all the kind of the, the general uh, acute illnesses and things that people have. Um, I think we're also reasonable at managing the chronic illnesses, but not that good, obviously, on a public health level at stopping people develop them in the first place. Um, and yeah, I don't think we're 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 not we don't have the same number of things like scanners and things that other countries have um, for you know cancers and 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 the screening programs for early detection of cancers and things mm. um, so uh, I guess it's kind of swings and roundabouts but we're our, our um I think it's it's a very system that was that very the equality uh, say that again sorry very sort of equitable system where it, you know, so it gives the best to the largest group of people. Uh, yeah. Um, but it does mean that we're perhaps on top of the kind of league tables of specialist care because obviously, right. if you have a private system which is having a lot paid in, then clinics can get very good at certain things. Um, our system doesn't necessarily favour that. Um, and we are having to obviously just cater for everybody in every area. So um, I think it's overall, I think it's it's a really good system, but it does have some disadvantages. Um, and we don't have the same uh, number of like, you know, doctors per patient per, per population as other countries have. Oh, that's um, interesting. I think we use them quite efficiently. That's an advantage, I suppose. Mm. For example, this lady here has her insurance company is called Cheapo Care. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound like a yeah, great. That's the big advantage is that we do not have health insurance uh, at the moment in the NHS. At the moment, yeah. <laughs> right, I better let you go and uh, uh, and yeah, because uh, but this has been so interesting. Thank you very very much for. Um, <laughs> for, for spending time and going through over in your conclusion what is your would you say project hospital is is realistic or uh, or is there much to be desired i think it's it's definitely got a lot more realism than i've seen in other games um and you know it clearly uses a lot of the right symptoms and you know the right sort of general vignettes for patients um it obviously is as you 
said, you know, it's, it's a kind of um, it's a very uh, linear way of looking at a hospital um, in terms of sort of a patient coming in and you just deal with them and they go out. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it isn't like a real hospital and you know, you've got all the kind of complexities of people's backgrounds and everything in real life. Mm -hmm. But I think it does a pretty decent job. Um, I think for, as a doctor, I think I would find it a bit more frustrating because um, because actually okay. um, Say that last bit again. Let's keep cutting out. I think especially, especially in the UK, we wouldn't have the attitude where you just diagnose by using more tests and, and you know, oh. it, it would kind of It'd be, it'd be really great if you could kind of get a bit more history from the patient, maybe uh, learn a bit more about them to be able to work out the problem. Um, mm. Because very much the way we're taught in medical school um, is kind of through a basic uh, like story of somebody and then you gradually get more and more information and you put together, you kind of begin to learn about how, how medicine works. Um, so it'd be, it, from my point of view, great if it worked a bit more like that but given that it's you know got a lot of other aspects of the game. Mm, that's cool okay well that's good so and, and I'm pleased that I'm I'm learned so much from this and so much from you actually from our conversations uh, I'm glad that um, I'm not learning things that will are you know at least they are on the on the right lines of being real there's no bloaty head in this game <laughs> I think the, the conditions are, are right. Obviously, they're not all um, as e equally kind of important. Um, you know, obviously, athletes foot doesn't come to a hospital um, <laughs> ever. Um, and and obviously, people who um, have like some kind of septic shock are not going to be better in a day with some antibiotics or that kind of thing. So, you know, it's not completely realistic in how it treats all of these different things because it's so varied in real life. Um, but you know, I think it's I think it's not bad. It's very good. That's cool. Okay. All right. Well, that's brilliant. Well, thank you very much. So you have been watching Adam Jackson and Jemima Jackson, no relation uh, that we know of. And uh, and thank you very much, Jemima. Stay tuned. <laughs>